And a warm welcome to GRTS News at 2000 hours. We are broadcasting live for viewers in the Gambia and around the world. In the headlines, this are President Adam Abaro calls for immediate global response to alleviate the suffering, the suffering and poverty that hold nations to ransom. The United States Department of Agriculture awards $28.5 million to the Gambia to assist the country's food security program. Road lightning and unhindered movement and climate migration mitigation. The Basa Development Initiative installs solar street lights in the provincial capital to ease mobility. In sports, a befitting tribute for a celebrated journalist, Kermama Village launches the Palmodofal Memorial Football Tournament, remembering the work of the late sports journalist. Away from home, extreme weather impacts, drought affected parts of the Horn of Africa, race up for a fifth consecutive failed rainy season and russia begins referendums in eastern ukraine on friday to decide the annexation of the country occupied regions well that's the top of the news and much more coming ahead with me i said Kater. thanks for joining us we have people who are at We begin this um, bulletin with the presidency because His Excellency Adam Abaro, who is in New York, where he stressed the need for new perceptions, approaches, and renewed commitments to increase resource levels equals to the scale of both current and emerging challenges. President Adam Abaro made the remarks on Thursday during the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly. He underscored the need to strengthen the political will, taking advantage of opportunities that go with the global crisis to enhance the lives and livelihoods of the citizenry. Take a listen. The current cost of living crisis across the world is a wake-up call for immediate global response to alleviate the suffering and poverty that hold our nations to ransom. 
the global inflationary trends, food insecurity, and the energy crisis compounded the natural disasters that continue to cause havoc around the world. The need for relief grows by the day, yet global efforts appear to be less and less effective. In this connection, my delegation fully welcomes the establishment of the Secretary General's Global Crisis Response Group and eagerly look forward to concrete action-oriented recommendations and solutions. As one of the hard-hit developing countries, the Gambia stands ready to cooperate with the group to find real solutions for immediate relief. Mr. President, we have come to this summit with gratitude for the partnership and support extended to us from 2016 to date. Mr. Secretary General, we thank you personally and the entire UN body for the continued support of our peace building and reconciliation efforts. The Gambia has come a long way from dictatorship and has transitioned into a true multi-party democracy. Following the 2021 presidential election and the legislative elections this year, the consolidation process is gaining momentum. We will step up reforming and strengthening our national institutions to sustain a robust democracy where human rights and fundamental freedoms underpin our national policies. Are there on the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Now, the Vice President Badara Ali Ujuf on Wednesday received in audience the World Food Program Regional Director for West and Central Af Africa, Mr. Chris Nikoi, who paid a courtesy call on him at the State House. After a closed door meeting the with the Vice President, Mr. Nikoi disclosed that their discussion centered on a range of issues, including government's response to perennial floodings in the Gambia and other related challenges in the agriculture sector, such as fertilizers and possible impact of low yields to other social protection system that needs to be strengthened by the government. Moving on, the United States Department of Agriculture has awarded $28.5 million to the Gambia to assist the country's food security program. The funds are being awarded through the Micro Microdole International Food for Education and Child Nutrition Program, which is administered by USDA's Foreign Agricultural Service. This award is part of President Biden's $2 billion additional food funding rather to strengthen global food security announced at the United Nations General Assembly. The Mark Govan Dole International Food for Education and Child Nutrition Program helps support Support education, child development, and food security in low income de food deficit countries around the globe. The program provides for the donation of U.S. agricultural commodities as well as financial and technical assistance to support school feeding and maternal and child nutrition projects. The key objective of the Margo Van Dole program is to reduce hunger and improve literacy and primary education, especially for girls. By providing school meals, teacher training, and related support, Margot Van Dole projects help boost school enrollment and academic performance. At the same time, the program also focuses on improving children's health and learning capacity before they start school by offering nutrition programs for pregnant and nursing women, infants, and preschoolers. Well, let's now head to the Upper River City of Basse, where a new street lightning scheme is bring, brightening roads in the expansive metropolis, courtesy of the Basse Development Initiative, which is expanding a, a major effort to boost advances in the Upper River region. Our regional correspondent, Sadie Kamara, has the details. New era of lightning comes to Basse as Solar Gambia installed 19 solar lights along the street of the Upper River region city, leading to the central mosque of the expansive metropolis. The installation of these solar lights joined a major effort to brighten the vicinity around the Basel Central Mosque to ease movement, particularly for the elderly during the late hours, such as early morning and night prayers. According to the project coordinator, Daudanene Galejalo, the solar lights provided were installed 
by Solar Gambia, a renewable energy company supporting access to sustainable lightning. Just looking at uh, this project, it's native of Basse, um, trying to help native of Basse, and then implemented by natives of Basse. So this is something that uh, now we've, we've got the technical know-how, we've got the um, equipment, we've got the resources uh, to be able to implement this kind of projects. Um, Solar Gambia is here to do the difference because we've implemented in other parts of the country and now we are here in our own region to implement these projects. Solar lightning system, a viable means to mitigate climate change. According to Mr. Jallo, who call on the people of the region, particularly the youth, to unite for basset development. Anyhow we can be able to do, um, to, and so we mitigate the effects of climate change, these are very, very important things. And solar is one of those, because uh, with solar, you will be able to um, uh, reduce the carbon emissions, and those are actually the leading factors to uh, environmental um, um, degradation or to climate change. Uh, actually, when you use solar also, you don't have to depend on others. Sometimes uh, you, that light comes and goes, um, but then if you have a solar project in your, in your area or in your house, that is actually going to help you because with or without um, electricity, um, you are good to go. The chairman of Basset Development Initiative, Ahmad Jao, said the installation of lights in strategic area will help movement during nightly hours. This is the central mosque, as you can see, and uh, it's very dark in the streets at night. And there are some elderly people, they are scared to come to pray fajr because it's dark. We thought of this idea having these lamp poles in the back streets so that it will brighten the area and make life easy for the people. The natives of Basse in the Gambia and in the diaspora sat down and thought it necessary to come together and devise a plan to be able to help the Basse community. On behalf of the beneficiaries, Boy Barry commended the Basset Development Initiative for the gesture noting that solar lights around the central mosque and other areas will go a long way in making movement smooth for people, especially those living in the city centre. Seeing lighting around this vicinity of Basse, where it is always dark, uh, you can see our street lights are no more working, and then this is the central mosque of Basse and then access to it during the night is always a problem. So if, uh, if BDI should come up with this good initiative, we are saying thank you to all them. The officials call on donor organization to emulate BDI and support development in Basse and the Upper River region. The Basse Development Initiative is an advocacy organization operating to implement projects across the entire region with objectives to positively impact lives and livelihoods. The organization has formed different committees to cover multiple development areas such as disaster management, education, health, religious matters, among a host of others. Seru Kamara, reporting for Jatas News from Basse Upper River Region. Now to a press release from the Office of the Gambia, Director General of the Gambia Immigration Department, who have noticed with concern speculations making rounds on social media, alleging that personnel of Gambia Immigration Department are engaged in issuing national ID cards to people at Majum Real Estate premises in Church's Town. The media release states that the allegations reported certain individuals to be discreetly working with the GID officers to accomplish the alleged ID card issuing exercise. According to the release, the leadership of the Gamba Immigration Department considers such allegations, especially in a public space, extremely sensitive and worrying, and therefore needed to be accorded all urgent attention it deserves. Thus, the more reason the management sanctioned a swift probe into the matter. Contrary to the allegations, the release further adds, find Reveal that the allegations are unfounded and malicious. The Office of the Director General states that the matter is absolutely serious and premature for anyone to share such information with the public without an iota of proof. The dispatch further encouraged members of the public to desist from such practices rather to engage relevant authorities for clarifications. The Office of the Director General resolves to remain open and accessible to those interested in getting the facts about the department.
and its related activities in accordance with law and best practices. The immigration boss assures the public of his office unwavering commitment to professionalism in executing its statutory mandate in the common interest of all sections of society. The release ends. Now, up to 80 personnel of the Gamba Police and sister forces, including Immigration, Customs and Prison Services, have completed a two-week criminal justice executive course by the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. The program formally ended today at the Paradise Suites Hotel. Ibrahim Ajalo has the rest of that in this report. 80 personnel of the Gambia Police Force went through a two-week criminal justice executive course. It was bankrolled by the German government, implemented by the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. The Public Relations Officer of the Gambia Police Force, ASP Bintanjai, spoke highly of the importance of the training in enhancing the capacity of the police to deal with criminal matters. Trained to enhance their capacities in areas of investigation and prosecution of criminal cases, as well as encourage them to forge stronger cooperations and coordination ties themselves and with other stakeholders of the Gambia criminal justice system for effective service delivery. Additionally, topics on great importance, topics on great importance such as the Gambia criminal justice system and actors involved, role of the police in the investigation and prosecution of criminal cases. Credit assistant Aminata Silla is one of the beneficiaries of this training. She said the training has enhanced the knowledge of participants regarding criminal justice in their law enforcement duties to facilitate knowledge for those who do not know and to serve as a reminder for those who already know. So I believe that after this training, all of us here would be professional in our day-to-day -day work, especially in our day-to-day -day work and most especially prosecutors who are here would master the art of professionalism in making sure that due process is respected and observed in handling cases for delivery of effective justice. The Assistant Inspector General of the Gambia Police Force, Ibrahim Abba, outlined the relevance of this learning and knowledge sharing exercise for personnel of the police and sister forces. He urged the participants to make use of the knowledge gained. Assistant Commissioner of Police of the Ghana Police Force, Usman Abdul Razak, spoke on behalf of the Commandant of the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, applauding the participants for successful completion of the course, which he said is significant in the daily work of the police. I believe you have imbibed all the topics that your facilitators discussed with you. And so it is expected that you will avoid actions and inactions that deprive people of true justice and use this experience to promote peace, security and stability in your respective communities. Let me emphasize that the efficient and effective dispensation of justice is dependent on the active interdependence and collaboration roles of all of us. Participants were drawn from all sister forces of the police and from different locations across the country. Officials say the knowledge gain is expected to reflect in their work. Ibrahim Ajalo, GRTS News. Children's Education Advocacy Group Phony Dindeng Federation partnered with Child Fund to disburse 50,000 exercise books to more than 3,000 direct enrolled students. Thursday's presentation, which delivered books worth over $1 million, also went to an additional 200 vulnerable children in different communities. Majan Baro. The academic year begins and parents are figuring ways to provide educational need for their children. Addressing challenges faced by students, especially the vulnerable, Fonyi Dindin Federation and Child Phone partnered to deliver its annual distribution of exercise and reading books for libraries to students in Fonyi. The manager, Fonyi Dindin Federation, Idi Ba, reiterated his organization's commitment in providing support to children. Mr. Barr further appealed to parents to make best use of the materials by helping students to take learning seriously. We hereby appeal to the children to make the best use of these materials um, to improve you know, their, their performance in school. This is a response to um, one of our core outcomes, which is um, educated and confident children. 
which is also in line with our strategic plan and that of child phone strategic plan. Representing child phone program and sponsorship director Mfamara Dabo described the gesture as part of his organization's efforts to help children with adequate learning materials. Providing such books today will solely help enhance children's education, but more specifically, facilitate the improvement of their numeracy and literacy skills. Children are generally affected by the poor performance in numeracy and literacy in schools. Primary and lower basic school children are confronted with problems of not being able to read, write, and understand simple sentences. The board chairman of the Fonyi Dindim Federation, Alaji Jaju, and Almame Samate Cluster Monitor for Sibanor, both described the donations as timely and call on other philanthropies to emulate Fonyi Dindim Federation and Child Fund. Uh, we know that the government alone or the ministry alone cannot do it. We only hope that good partners like you, stakeholders like you, would also emulate the things that you are doing for your education. Representing parents and beneficiary children, Nimasata Kante and Naomi Sajo, thank donors for the timely intervention. We, the children, must be ready to take this great opportunity to achieve our goal. Once again, we thank the Federation and its agent for helping we, the school children, in our academic career. Thank you all. As the 2022-2023 academy year begins in Fonyi, 50,000 books are set to be distributed to ease learning for beneficiary students. Majan Baro for GRTS News. Youth in North Bank region have launched the local organizing committee for the upcoming National Youth Conference, NACONF. The event held in the North Bank town of Karawan was attended by the governor of the region, youth representatives and other stakeholders. Our re regional correspondent in the region, Farmer Akani, has more in this report. The launching of the local organizing committee of the NACOF in the North Bank region was attended by a cross-section of youths. Senior government officials, including the Technical Advisory Committee, district chiefs and village heads across the region. Speaking at the event, Al-Hassan Jao, the regional youth coordinator, noted the significance of NACOF in youth development. He described the biannual convergence as a platform where youths across the country can interact and share productive ideas. The activities of NACOF PURPA will include conference on different thematic areas. And these thematic areas include sporting activities and other indoors and outdoors games. It also includes cultural activities um, that will showcase the talents of Gambian tradition. And of course, while the cultural activities will be done, there will be masquerade dance and as well as storytelling to express um, the Gambian tradition and culture. It will also include beauty pageant, academic competition, that is quiz in front of speech, drama, and etc. And also wrestling will also take place. There will be also an entrepreneurship exhibition uh, for the entrepreneurs. Trade fair will be organized. Fair and pitching competition among young entrepreneurs will also be organized across. A budget amounting to over $2 million was presented by the committee to the officials. It was also a moment for delegates to make some financial commitments geared towards funding the various events during the NACOF. Lamin Serigan, the governor of the region, said his office will continue to work with young people of the region. He used the occasion to call on natives and philanthropists in the region to support the program. To organize such an event needs a massive funding. I therefore urge all, all, all the businessmen, individuals, and other support, and other, um, so, and other people who can support this event so that our region can be counted among the best. Similar words were echoed by Mohamed Suare, the youth chairperson of the North Bank region. Malamin I. L. Bojang, chairman of the Kerawan Area Council, also disclosed that the Kerouan Area Council in its capacity will support the coming NACOF. 
the local organizing committee of the support from all and sundry to fund their various activities during the coming neck off. For the news, I am Farmer. Well, we now join the Central Forecast Office for the day's weather outlook. Sports News is up next Thursday. Credit even if you're out of cash. Borrow up to $250 as credit with the Afrosol Cola Credit. Send a blank SMS to 152 to activate the Cola Credit. Afrosol Cola Credit, the solution for you. Send money to Gambia for free. You can now send money via MoneyGram to AfriMoney in Gambia anytime, anywhere. Simply go on to MoneyGram.com. Or the app and select pay through AfriMoney to send. Make sure the receiver is registered on AfriMoney in Gambia or get them to dial star 777 hash to register. Instantly, the money comes into their AfriMoney wallet. No hassle, no wait times, complete ease. Cash out at any AfriMoney agent or AfriSell outlets. Free cash out, no sending fees. As the countdown to the global soap is in Qatar ages closer, the national broadcaster GRTS will be airing the FIFA 2022 World Cup games in Qatar live on TV. 32 nations across five confederations will compete across five host cities in the state of Qatar. The greatest moments in FIFA World Cup history awaits the sporting world. Enjoy World Stars as they showcase their talents and compete for glory. To be a sponsor of the FIFA 2022 World Cup Games airing on GRTS TV, call GRTS Commercial Service on 4377-214-996-8585 or 254-7272. The FIFA World Cup 2022 starting November 20th to December 18th, 2022. Be part of this masterpiece event in global football. Welcome back and in sports, Kermama Village defeated Fas Omar, Sa Fas Omar Sahorada 1-0 in the Super Cup final named after celebrated sports journalist Pamu Dufal, a former Daily Observer and Point newspaper reporter who contributed immensely to sporting development in the North Bank. The tournament sponsored by Gambia Nemel's referee Babu Karjala was staged in loving memory of the late journalist who is remembered for his unique contribution to sports development in the area and across the country. Modi S. Jala has the details of that in this report. The late Badu Jase football field in Kermama, Opanyomi was the venue for the first edition of the Pamudu Fall Memorial Tournament. The Intervillage Tournament is organized in loving memory of late journalist Pamudu Fall, 
who died in a fatal car crash earlier this year. The former Daily Observer and The Point newspaper reporter is being remembered by the people of Kermama, one of many communities he profiled in his work to support sports development. Saddened by his untimely demise, top Gambian MLS referee and Kermama native Babu Karjalo decided to support a special district football tournament to celebrate the late journalist. Jalo, who recently made headlines when he officiated an El Clasico friendly between Real Madrid and Barcelona, said Pamudu's exemplary life and legacy is worth celebrating. Pamudu has been one of those people who has contributed a lot in football development in Gambia and particularly in Kermama um, from the grassroots level. So to keep his legacy going, and to remember his contribution, I felt very compelled and I felt it's very important for us to continue celebrating his, celebrating and honoring his legacy. And the only way we can do that is to organize a tournament and name it after him in Kermama. So we Kermama Sports Committee are very grateful because Pamod has been there from us since the late uh, 90s to the early 2000s. Um, to cover us as there. Kermama and Fasaho contested the Cotton Razor Super Cup final, which was attended by Pamudu's family, including his widow, Mariama Jalo, and son, Mohamed Fall, who took the formal kickoff. <laughs> the tight contest was decided by Habib Jalo's second half strike. His shot deflected into the back of the net to secure a 1 0 win for Kermama over Fast Jalo. <laughs> The family of the late Pamudu, led by his brother Ali Jawara, were immensely appreciative of the loving tribute by the community of Kermama. Sixteen villages in the Upper Nomi district will contest the inaugural edition of the Pamudu Fall Memorial Football Tournament, remembering the much-loved sports and health journalist, hailed for his remarkable work in promoting sports and health issues through inspiring journalism that impacted many communities. <laughs> Well, we will be back with news beyond our borders right after this break. Do stay. Now, drought-affected parts of the Horn of Africa area are bracing for a fifth consecutive failed rainy season. According to the aid agency, a shortfall in funding is putting the lives of millions of people at risk. CGTN's Daniel Arab Moy reports. Extreme weather conflicts and the rising cost of living are pushing millions of people towards starvation in the Horn of Africa. According to Oxfam International, Close to 50 million people are expected to face serious food insecurity by the end of the year. We have people who are at risk of dying if the short trains fail in the Horn of Africa. By December, we may be able to, we will be seeing famine-like situations and deaths from hunger. According to humanitarian agencies, the region is experiencing the worst drought in 40 years. Women and children are among the hardest hit. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine has sent global food prices soaring, leaving people in their own even more vulnerable. Humanitarian partners in the region are providing support, but funding remains a challenge. So I think the UN General Assembly must make sure that we have enough resources in the region here, in the, in the, in the Horn of Africa, to really address these immediate needs. Uh, and putting money towards that end will really be very, very critical to make sure that humanitarian organizations, especially the frontline actors, the local actors really, uh, save lives. According to Oxfam, the onslaught of climate disasters is now outpacing poor people's ability to cope pushing them deeper into severe hunger. Experts have warned that the region is already on the brink of a catastrophe and that time is running out. Daniel Arab Moy, CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya. Extreme weather events, conflicts and the rising cost of living are pushing millions of people towards starvation in the Horn of Africa. According to Oxfam International, Close to 50 million people are expected to face serious food insecurity by the end of the year. We have people who are at risk of dying if the short trains fail in the Horn of Africa. By December, 
we may be able to, we will be seeing famine like situations and deaths from hunger. According to human. Meanwhile, referendums over whether certain occupied or partially occupied Ukrainian regions should formally be annexed by Russia got underway on Friday. Citizens in Luhansk, Kherson, and partly Russian controlled Zaporizhia and Donetsk regions of Ukraine were reportedly casting their ballots amid the backdrop of ongoing war. Russian residents of Donetsk celebrate in mid-February after Russia recognized the Ukrainian region as an independent state. Days before Russia began its war, people here thought the declaration would bring peace. It's very important for all of us that peace will finally come to our republic and to Luhansk. We just want peace and calm. But conflict escalated after Russian President Vladimir Putin signed up to support the separatists and used their claims of oppression as grounds for an invasion. Now Moscow-backed officials in four regions are seeking not just recognition, but annexation. Votes on whether to join Russia will take place in occupied Kherson, Zaporizhia, Luhansk and Donetsk parts of which have been held by separatists since 2014, when Crimea was seized by Russia following a so-called referendum. Kremlin-installed leaders in the regions raced to announce their ballots days after Ukrainian troops recaptured swathes of eastern territory. They have been preparing for months, signing up residents as Russian citizens. In Luhansk, some see the vote as a way out of war and deprivation. I think the referendum will be for the best. Yes, that there will be water and electricity, and people will feel like they are on their native land. But for those who fled to Ukrainian-held parts of Zaporizhia, the votes are a sham. It's a violation of international law. It's a fake task to show that occupied territories want to join the Russian Federation, which is a total lie. The ballot papers are printed, but there's no question that the outcome will entrench the conflict. have died in Iran in days of protests over the death of Masha Amini. Clashes between security forces and protesters have been ongoing since Amini died while in police custody on September 13th. Among the victims from the ensuing protests have been both security forces and demonstrators, according to Iranian media. There were again violent clashes on Wednesday night, with footage which could not be verified purported to show shots being fired at those protesting. A crackdown on internet usage has ensued with mobile networks and Instagram, which was one of the last available social networks blocked. These are unprecedented images. Iranian cities are engulfed with protests. Despite the use of force by police, people continue to come out onto the streets. The death of Masa Amini sparked these protests. Women are angry at the state dictating a strict dress code. But now, the cause has become bigger. Many men have joined too. They want the current leadership to go. The state is fighting back hard. There are reports of security forces firing metal pellets and tear gas. Many have been killed in the clashes. The Iranian leadership's attempt to quell the anger have so far been unsuccessful. I contacted her family, the family of the deceased, at the very first opportunity, and I assured them personally that we will continue to investigate the incident. There are reports of Instagram and WhatsApp outages, an attempt to discourage people from organizing protests. The fury that has been caused by Masa Amini's death is shaking the hardline Iranian state. Live from Banjul and this is GRTS News with me, Isa Tukaita. A quick look at our main points once again.
President Adam Abaro has called for immediate global response to alleviate the suffering and poverty that hold our nations to ransom. The United States Department of Agriculture has awarded $28.5 million to the Gambia to assist the country's food security program. Road lightning and unhindered movement and climate migration, the Basset Development Initiative has installed solar streetlights in the provincial capital to ease mobility. In sports, a befitting tribute for a celebrated journalist, Ker Mama Village has launched Pamodu Fal Memorial Football Tournament, remembering the work of the late sports journalist. Away from home, extreme weather impact, drought affected parts of the Horn of Africa, bracing for a fifth consecutive failed rainy season. And Russia has begun referendums in eastern Ukraine on Friday to decide the annexation of the country occupied regions. Well, that was all we had time for in the news at 2000 hours. Do join me again at 2200 hours for more news and updates. Until then, I am Isa Tukaita and thanks for watching. The cheapest SMS service in the Gambia brought to you by the coolest network AfriCell. Text all day every day with your friends and loved ones to AfriCell network for only 40 boots per SMS. The texting never stops. AfriCell always hook you up. Double the data, double the fun, only on AfriMoney. Buzz Bundle. To enjoy the Buzz Bundle on Afri Money, dial star 777 hash and double your data for as low as $10 and get 80 megabytes. And also, receive 3 gigabytes of data for only $150. There's more. There's more. Just dial star 777 hash to find out. All bundles are valid for 7 days. To cash in, visit our nearest Afri Money agent. Afri Money. Send money anywhere, anytime. Do you enjoy talking on the phone? Well, if so, enjoy 1,000 minutes of talk time from your AfriCell line to your loved one or your favorite person for $150. Dial star 135 hash to get your very own 1,000 minutes of talk time. Let's talk. Helper of Destiny Ministry.